Hi, I'm Mark Bradley, and I work for Harris Corporation. We do a fair amount of research and development for the defense industry. I chose this topic, accounting for research and development, because it's something of personal interest, and it's also something that I think I'm going to have to lead and manage in the future. Thank you for listening. What we'll talk about during this agenda is what is research and development? What are the benefits to the organization? What are the risks involved? What are the strategies companies use to employ R&D? How do the companies account for the strategies and why it's important to accounting? We'll do some case study examples and then we'll talk about a summary and some lessons learned from the case studies. What is research and development? Research and development refers to the investigative activities a business conducts to improve existing products and procedures to lead to development of new products and procedures. It really is a life engine of American economy. It's what keeps, this, it's what keeps the technology sector going and it's what keeps businesses selling new products to people. There are many benefits of R&D. R&D can be an indicator to investors that your company is continuing to innovate and develop new products. There are also many ways that investors look at how you invest. One is by doing simple equations, like taking your earnings per share plus your R&D spent and dividing that by the price per share. This is also an indicator. As with every investment, there are financial risks to R&D. R&D is not typically focused on immediate profit. Instead, it's focused on the long-term profitability for a company. The more that the company spends on R&D, the more they risk. So they have to be focused on return on investment. There are several different types of R&D. Not all R&D is scientific breakthroughs. Some is like finding and selling, like oil companies do. And then some is like acquiring technologies. And we'll go through some. Since this isn't an accounting course, it's important to look at how we account for the different types and different strategies for R&D. One is to figure out how much you're spending on R&D and how much you should spend on R&D. Know that the more you spend on R&D doesn't mean the more successful it will be. And one thing that I found very interesting in doing this research is that the federal government gives you tax credits for R&D as a company. The federal government treats R&D dollars like government grants, allowing for credits of up to 45% depending on the size of the company. They make you take three different accounting approaches to do this, an income tax approach, a government grant approach, or a split approach. And we'll go over in the next slide what that means. Now we'll take a look at the different accounting approaches and their impact on the financial statements. If you look at the income tax approach, the government grant approach, and the split approach, they're all handled the same, except for the fact that they have a different effect on the effective tax rate. The real difference in the approaches is whether or not they take the tax before or after they do the tax credit. In case one and two, you see the opposite. In case one, they take the tax benefit after they ta tax their overall earnings. In example two, they take the tax credit before they do the tax on their earnings. And in example three, they split it up. Why does this make a difference? Well, it, it makes a difference if you figure in tax brackets and different effective tax rates based on the tax brackets. Now we'll take a look at some case studies. Our first case study for research and development is when Disney acquired Pixar to instantly complement their animation capabilities. There were a lot of challenges with the acquisition. Price, they were required to pay $7.4 billion in stock for the purchase. An increase in financing activities. And also utility and culture. How could they take on Pixar without ruining the culture that made Pixar successful? One of the things that's credited with making it a very successful acquisition is that Disney allowed Pixar to act autonomously. While it may have been tempting to look at overlapping R&D for animation and consolidate, Disney took a different approach. We took the exact opposite approach, which was to say to the each studio, you may look at the other tools the others has, but if you want to use them, the choice is yours. Disney exchanged 2.3 shares of its common stock for each share of Pixar common stock resulting in an issuance of 279 million shares. What some feared would dilute shares actually ended up being successful. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Microsoft's acquisition of Aquantive. 
Microsoft is putting about $2 billion a year into its marketing campaign and saw that Google was making a lot off of digital marketing. marketing. So they ended up paying $6.3 billion for Aquantive, a company that they thought would put them in the ranks with Google. It was immediately clear to investors that this wasn't a great acquisition. After spending $6.3 billion on the company, Microsoft continued to pour money into its digital marketing, marketing R&D. In fact, in 2012, Microsoft wrote off the entire value of the acquisition. You'll notice in the consolidated balance statement below that there's a line called goodwill, impairment. This confirmed to investors that Microsoft had a poor R&D acquisition strategy. Our final example was a successful approach that didn't involve acquisition. In 2002, Novartis AG redesigned its R&D around an architectural approach. First, they built a laboratory in Boston near top-notch medical schools and hospitals. Then they hired the right people. They allowed the people to work autonomously as long as they developed opportunities that met a large medical need and developed biological insight. And then they developed processes that didn't hinder the research, but, all, but just helped at a local level support the research staff. By 2008, Novartis had become one of the largest pharmaceutical manufacturers and sellers in the world. To conclude, R&D is not just about the science. It's about the accounting of the science. R&D is exciting. It's the engine that fuels the American economy. In a case study by the Harvard Business Review, 40 years of R&D trends were researched to show that while opportunities within industries decline over time, as they do, companies respond by creating new industries with greater technology opportunity. Accounting for R&D is important. It's important to take advantage of tax credits, taking write-offs when necessary, and deciding whether to use cash or finance activities to, or potentially dilute shares of stock. Successful R&D requires more than just a breakthrough. It requires a managerial philosophy and a culture that adapts to the breakthrough. It requires forethought, and it also requires having the right people. And for acquisitions, that may mean focusing on keeping the right people. I've learned a great deal in this accounting course that's going to allow me to become a better leader and manager within my company. I appreciate your time, and thank you very much.